see what happens. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well today. If you guys are new here, this is Hugh and this is my Red Sea Reefer 350. I'm trying to do the weekly updates for you guys. Um, Euphelia, they're super happy in this tank. Um, when they were in the Lagoon 25, really stressed out with the clownfish, kind of trying to host them and um, kind of smother them with their bodies, I guess, every day. And then for the last couple of weeks, they were like rearranging things and pulling them and things like that. And I noticed them shrinking down and I moved them over here and in this tank, thank God my, my clownfish over here, they got their own anemones that they're taking care of and feeding and everything. They're on this end and over here, no one's bothering my um, frog spawns or my hammers right here. So they're super happy and expanded out and everything. Something happened to the tank recently, my GSP. Part of it is like agitated or something. Maybe it's this uh, cucumber right here that's kind of like crawling through. But um, this section looks well, but over here they're receded. It happens from time to time, I notice. They get agitated and um, they kind of retract and then after a couple of days they'll come back. You can see them coming back right here on the wall. But over here, it could give you a scare. You would think like the GSP would be dead, but I think GSP is kind of bomb proof. Uh, zooming out, the fish are all here. They're looking to get fed. Uh, let me get some seaweed in here so you guys can see everyone up front and center once again. Okay, so now I know why my um, GSP is agitated because down here one of the anemones is crawling all over it so it's probably stinging the GSP um, moving wherever it's moving. As you can see down there the anemone. That's what's agitating it so after this video I gotta put my arm in there and grab, grab it and then I put them into this breeder box right here. These guys are perfectly happy in the breeder box and the coloration looks way better than the guys down here on the rock. But the, the I got the I got the random flow generator pushing water um, above it and they pretty much like it like that. All right, we got the Nori in. Nori is the seaweed. Um, the brand I use is Ocean Nutrition, but I have used um, off brands before. They like it all the same. It's just Ocean Nutrition has this red seaweed that they lace with garlic. Um, supposedly it's good for their health and immune system, but um, I like it. I like the brand so far. Um, the fish enjoy it and all of my fish look healthy and they're going at it. There goes the Niger trigger fish right there. Yeah, like I said before in the past videos when I got him, I, he looked black at the LFS but when he got into my tank he looks like a deep um, midnight black or purplish. No, deep midnight blue or purplish at times. Um, he got a piece and he's like going into his cave right there with his piece. You guys can see that. Everyone's coming out, even the lawnmower Blenny, I just saw. But, yep, everybody's super healthy. Um, we're preparing to leave town for about a week or so. Um, and I got something to, um, put on this tank I want to show you guys. All right guys, so I got this auto feeder from Ehein back in my guppy breeding days where I wanted to just 
uh, automate the feeding of the guppies and have them fatten up throughout the day without me being around the tank. Um, it's pretty simple contraption. You fill it up with um, feed. It has remnants of old feed in here flakes or um, pellets and things like that and you have an opening right here that you can adjust the amount of food that comes out every rotation so what I plan to do is to set this up while I'm out of town so every day the fish has um, food supplied through supplied to it through this Eheim auto feeder will rotate and drop in some pellets throughout the day whatever time I set it at you can see that but um I haven't used this because if I drop flakes into the tank it would just um, be up on the surface and they'll just go down the drain most of the time so that's why I have this feeding station right here it looks kind of nasty but I put a whole bunch of flake in here let me demonstrate to you guys so I have a pinch full of flake and I usually put it into the station right here this is from Aquamax I got it from Marine Depot you guys are interested I'll leave a link down in the description but it's I like it it's only 20 bucks and it works out for me um, when I'm feeding so I put in the feed right here and since it's in this contraption it's not on the surface and it's going to go down into the into the overflow I just wait usually one of the tanks would smell it and then they would head up into the tube and kind of agitate it and then the, the flakes would slowly get into the water column you can sorry my glass isn't um, clean but you can see the flakes slowly making its way down into the water column and then everybody feeds off of it. Right here, you guys can see. There goes the wrasse, it goes up in there. There you go, so everyone smells it. They're gonna go all crazy for the, for the flakes right there. So with the feeding station, I didn't have a way to mount it up top. Maybe I could have rigged something, but I picked something up from uh, Marine Depot. Let me show you guys. I picked up this thing right here. It's only a couple bucks. It's an Eheim feeding station. It's similar with the tube going down into the tank. And then you have a spot to place the feeder. Let me get this out so you guys can see such a simple thing and it's made in Germany so it comes with the instructions kind of self-explanatory the base the connector and the tube itself this one's kind of square let me get everything together and then we'll put it onto the tank and we'll see how it works. All right, so assembly's pretty easy. It just kind of slides together like that. And then this is the clip that clips onto, or the clamp that clamps onto your glass. It's gonna push in like that. You're going to clamp it onto your glass. Alright, so I have it up here right next to the original feeding station. It's, it's pretty big, but it's on the side and it's kind of out of the way. So let me get the feeder up top with food and we'll test it out. Alright, so I got the feeder up top on the station. And we're gonna test it out right now to see how much food's gonna come through with one rotation. Can manually feed by pressing the button right here. I'm gonna feed right now, let's see what happens. I'm 
I think that's good enough. But food's dropping down in there pretty quickly. These guys are not hungry because we just threw in the seaweed and then I gave them some flake and now some pellets. But um, yeah, I think it's gonna work out for the the week that we're gonna be gone. This thing is gonna feed the tank while I'm away. Besides that, I think this video is just dragging on too long now. If you guys have any questions with the station or the feeder itself, please leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer you guys, but it's a simple contraption and it's not too pricey. So if you guys are leaving town or anything like that, um, look into one of these for yourself. Anyways, that's it from me today. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.